natural stereotypic response. Here we go. Now, what that person said to me was, when I told them that this is how I've been able to learn how to speak, etc., they said, well, that's one way to look at it. But when I remembered the story, this is what I did. I said, well, that's one way to look at it. I lifted up my shoulder when I was talking to the doc today about that story. And I said to the doc, I noticed that I lifted my shoulder, but that's not what the person did when they said what they said. Why would a tiny shoulder shrug be there when it wasn't there with the person who was actually saying it, but when I recounted it, the shrug was there? Why would a human being add something to a memory without meaning to do it? And they might not even be aware of it. Why would a human do that? Are they trying? If someone did that to you, if someone said, oh, they said they hated you, when in fact they didn't say they hated you, they said I, they hate uh, uh, you as a joke, but they don't remember it that way. Why would they openly look like they're lying? And the answer is that it, 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 there's a very good chance. Well, I know in my case, I was not. It was a natural reaction. In fact, my body had a reaction to recounting that memory. And that reaction was one of disdain and disgust. And you guys think about this in any situation in the last week where somebody has said something to you, family, friend, and instead of answering back, blah, 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 you go, blah, blah, blah. Just, just think about it. Show my chair. That's, that's actually a good idea. I didn't even think of that. <laughs> and the answer is that there's an emotional response. It's a knee-jerk reaction. If that's a knee-jerk reaction, why is it that not everyone has a knee in that case? Why is it that not everyone recounting that story would, re would recount it that way? Because we know that people don't recount stories in the same way, taking it personal. And then that's a very good answer. And the question is why? Now, if you don't know why you're taking it personal, I'm creating a lot of noise. Oh, sorry. Okay. I'll keep it like that. Let me keep it like that. So, if you are taking it personally and you don't know why, then you are having a physiological response from something way deep in your subconscious. And if it's deep in your subconscious, how did it get there? <laughs> how did it get there? Correct. So, it must have been there for a very long time. And in fact, if you can't verbalize why it's there, then it was probably there before you were able to verbalize at all. Exactly, Slim Grade is on the money. And if it happened before you're able to verbalize at all, then it's an imprint on the core of your identity that cannot be shaken, possibly for the rest of your life. Now, there is a cure for this. The cure is to know that it's there and be okay with it being there and understand that it will bias your behavior. It will make you feel as though one answer is potentially more true than the other one. Even though there is no objective evidence for that to be the case. You can change it, offset it. You, you can't remove an imprint, but you can offset it or understand it in a different way. Yes, but it's difficult. Alright, so I'm just going to pause chats again and I'll get into the next section. Uh, the feeling of being misunderstood happened before the memories I have of being age 9. An extended family telling me to stop with my outbursts my Tourette's outbursts. They didn't know they were Tourette's outbursts. They thought I was going up to them and openly going blah, 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 blah. And it was a lot worse than that. And I won't explain it. I don't need to do that anymore, but you can imagine. They thought I was doing that deliberately. They could not understand, and neither could I, that this was a compulsion that I could not remove. And now being able to mitigate it via medication and exercise therapy. It still manifests, but I know when it's going to come now. And that gives me enough time to get out of the public sphere in most cases. You can't expect a nine-year-old to know that. And you can't expect a family in the 80s who know nothing about Tourette's. And if you told them, they'd think it was made up. Uh, uh, that that's actually what's going on. And so it's a tragedy because the family loves the child. But the child also is traumatized by this behavior. But this, the point is that that's highly traumatic. Why close my eyes? It helps me focus when I'm talking. Uh, so that I can access certain memories and know what I'm going to say instead of being distracted. That's, a, that's another method of dealing with ADHD without having to get with that medication. All right. So when I am misunderstood, it causes severe and almost debilitating anxiety. And with a lot of therapy, and a lot of medication, a lot of exercise, and a lot of Wednesday wisdoms, I've been able to mitigate that substantially. We get people who used to watch our scope to then leave and say something that's not true. Right? And it doesn't bother me maybe 0.1% of what it used to. So the point is it can be mitigated, but it still exists. And the question is, why does it exist? We have to understand, of course, of past trauma, and that's why it exists, as I was saying before. And then how do we deal with it in the future when it comes to making future decisions? 
Well, what happens is that under severe stress, and I'm at the moment going through something that's extremely stressful. When a human being is under extreme stress, there is a very high chance, according to psychiatrists and psychologists, of them reverting back to their child self in the way that it dealt with things when it was under severe anxiety. It will revert to its natural weaknesses, its natural fears. And my child's fear was one of being misunderstood. It's very therapeutic, absolutely. But within yourself, exactly. That's exactly right. You can't change the world without understanding yourself because there are unconscious drivers that are forcing everyone to have very strong opinions. And when you look at the latest media article, which I'm going to get to today, which is Elhan Amr and her comments on Israel, there are over 10,856 posts on Instagram on Donald Trump's site um, based upon that. And if you read them, you can see that people in general are reacting subconsciously and unconsciously. And I will get to that in a sec because it's all related to what I'm talking about here. In my case, irrespective of the hundreds of messages I get every couple of days, and spiders no longer cool, irrespective of the hundreds of messages I get every couple of days of people telling me how much value my content gives them and how many people send me either presents or money or birthday cards or well wishes or whatever it is, none of that has been able to successfully make me realize that I am or my content or how I think is as valuable as people say it is. And you might think that's insane. How could you not see it? How could I finish a mathematics degree with a distinction, correct the math department twice, finish the degree in two years, get offered to do an honors and finish that in five months? To you very, you know. All of these things. How did I learn a Aramaic script in 15 minutes? How did I learn a Hebrew script in 90 minutes? How did I blah, 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 and the list keeps going on and on and on. And yet, and yet, I do not believe on the inside that I am of that level of value. I do not believe it. I think there's always another reason. It was an accident. Um, yeah, and it doesn't matter how many people say, oh, they're delusional. It doesn't count all the other people who don't think it, right? Now, this is an obvious bias to myself. You've been learning Aramaic with me. How cool is that? It, I'm openly showing you that this is an obvious bias. This is a conscious bias. You did great and you'll obsess on the one critic. Exactly, exactly. That is a bias, okay? Right there, you are witnessing your own bias. I know that intellectually, I'm extremely valuable, okay? Like many of us, Oz as well. And yet, I don't feel it. And that discrepancy between the feeling and the intellectual knowledge of yourself, that conflict is the bias. That's how it feels. Now, somebody said today, my doctor said, I have a, I have a trouble with putting people on a pedestal who understand me. And I disagreed with him. But then he changed his wording and he said to me, no, 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 what you do is you think that if only the world understood you the way I understand you, the doctor, everything would be fine. And I said, I do think that. And he said, that is putting me on a pedestal. And I thought, holy, that's what I'm doing. I'm actually thinking if everybody could understand me the way the doctor does, I wouldn't have any problems. That is the definition of putting him on a pedestal. And I didn't see it. I didn't see it until he explained it to me like that. And this is my point about we cannot see the biases that cause us to gravitate towards certain conclusions over the other. So now let's rewind all the way back to the guy who said to me, that's one way to put it. The guy that said, I have never, the guy who didn't know anything about autism and thought I couldn't have autism because I was very articulate. And so because they had a stereotype in their mind of autism. And I explained to them how I had learned to become articulate because of my savantism. And he's like, that's one way to look at it. Why did I add the shoulder shrug? That's one way to look at it. Why did I do that? Because I have a subconscious belief of my lack of value, even though consciously I know that that's false. I know that in many ways I am of a huge benefit to people, and yet subconsciously I don't believe it and it came out in the shrug. Okay? This whole thing, go back, go rewind this and when you watch the replay, and when I talk about the shrug, and now remember everything I just said and factor that in. And now when you get that context and you see the replay, start seeing that in everyone else around you and in yourself. And you will see how many times you do that in a freaking day. And once you reach that level of self-awareness, the level of power you will have over your decisions and your ability to talk to people without getting angry and upset will go through the roof. It is a superpower, I'm telling you now. It is absolutely liberating and amazing. Sorry. Do I look like I give a sh- Here we go!